Hi, friends. You read the title correctly. I'm doing it. I am presenting the Ultima Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette guide with a few stipulations. In this video, I will be covering the 15 pan palette, omitting the 5 pan palettes, the standard size, and the mini sizes. If you are wondering about my thoughts on those, I will be filming a separate video covering those palettes, but just for my own brain. I will then go over the 15 pan palettes, the originally large sized ones, including the mini ones. I have a lot of notes, excuse me while I get them together. Natasha Denona is a fantastic opportunity for me to get my makeup nerd on because there is definitely an evolution of formula within the Natasha Denona brand. Ever since she had started her eyeshadow palette releases in 2016, through now, you can see changes in her mattes, in her metallics, in her duochrome and, and chroma crystal shades. It's nice to dive into the palettes individually, dissect what the new formulas were introduced at the time, and covering Natasha's inspiration for each of these palettes, which I think speaks loudly when you understand her perspective in terms of the color stories and how she arranges them and why she included the colors that she does. It's really all fascinating to me and to now go over all these palettes in that timeline. This is not a ranking video. I will not be presenting these palettes from my least favorite to favorite. I will mention some of my favorites, however, just throw that in there. I am presenting these palettes in the order they were released and of course all time stamp to be down below with the palette name if you are just interested in one two three four or five you could click on that timestamp and get right to that part of the video why don't we begin with the palettes that started it all the big mama 28 pan palettes now quick perspective drop here if i were to quickly compare pat mcgrath to natasha denona for perspective's sake pat mcgrath came from a fast-paced high fashion background where she was responsible for the makeup scene on the runway very dazzle high shine very avant-garde and she was delivering that experience to her makeup brand whereas natasha denona i don't know if she still has her her makeup school but she was is still a makeup educator and when she released these palettes the intention behind the 28 panners was to make it easier for her students to navigate the colors also it will be uh, less expensive to pay for all the shades in one palette versus purchasing them as singles or in the five pan palettes which all those shades in the five pan palettes are found in the 28 pan palettes these were primarily for her students and if you happen to have known about it sure you could still buy them as a makeup consumer but that wasn't the intention originally but then influencers found out about these 28 pan palettes asked if they could try them out and i don't know if you remember but when nikki tutorials showed one of these in her videos and swatched one of them Everybody was like, what is that palette? I need it, I need it, I need it. And Natasha Denona, again, was not at that place to deliver such a high volume of these palettes. Again, they were for her students so that all the shades were in one place. They were easy for the students to use, to learn from. And now everyone and their mom wanted these big Mama 28 pan palettes. This all began in September of 2016 and at the time, Natasha Denona wanted to present a formula that was unique in that these were pressed pigments, had a high concentration of pearl, had a mica base, they were water resistant, long lasting, and because of the high pearl and mica content, they almost had like a creamy slick feel to them, which I guess at the time was unlike what many eyeshadows were feeling like and the fact that you had 28 shadows of that quality of that feel in one palette it was it definitely wooed people into finding out more 
about Natasha Denona. So here is the green brown palette and to briefly cover how these palettes are situated and what you will run into in all other palettes as we go down the timeline is that Natasha arranges these palettes in a way that no matter what row, column, quad, trio, duo, whatever you encounter in terms of a square rectangle, that is a look. So she did the thinking for you in terms of you not having to think very hard on what shade to combine. In this palette specifically, she had placed all the warm browns on one side, and then we go into the more yellow tone greens, the more cooler greens, you have the more silvery shades with the more vibrant turquoise and teals here, and then you move into the cooler part of the palette with more of the, the lighter beige shades and the cooler browns. Again, with her education background, she had wanted to place these shades in a way that were easy to navigate and understand. If you were learning how to become a, a makeup professional, that you will learn about color theory and which ones are best to match with what, especially if your client's undertone, skin tone is whatever it is. You're like, okay, well, which color I gotta use? Well, everything is placed in a way that'll be easy for you you to figure out at that moment. And for the blue purple arranged in a similar fashion, you have the purple shades on one side and you have the blues in the other, but you see it starts off with the cooler purples, moves into the uh, warmer purples here, more burgundy and wine and undertone. Then you go into the warmer blues, more like the, the darker warmer blues, the teal, the warmer blues, and then you have the cooler silvery blues here all the way at the end. And again, as I mentioned in the green brown palette, these are arranged where you can create a look just from this column, or if you wanted to go this way, you can create it from that row, even with the cooler purple included here, because these are all purples, it will still work out. So that's something I admire about Natasha in terms of how she arranges her palettes, how she designs them. It makes it very simple for, from anyone who's a makeup pro to a makeup beginner, I would say makeup beginner enthusiast, to dive into these shades, but again, how it's designed will lead you to the right direction and to quickly show you the just the creaminess of these metallic shades are remarkable they're very easy to blend it's not so much that they have dazzly shine like a typical metallic again the high pearl and mica content makes it very skin like and finished makes it very smooth on the swatch and you have the overlay here that not only will give you the name of the shade but will also give you the formula so i believe m is for metallic p might stand for pearl v V, I'm not too sure of. I don't know if V is like a, I don't think it stands for velvet. I have to double check on that. Now, one thing to note here is that these mattes are very different from the mattes we've seen from recent palettes. They don't pack the same punch. They're, they're lighter in texture. So they're meant to blend out the edges and give that nice gradient effect. Whereas when we encounter her creamy matte formula that was first introduced in the star palette, that formula has more adherence. It has a little more stick and one that's used, yes, to create a nice blurred gradient, but also to create a heavy block of color on the lid. So we'll go over that further when getting into the star palette. If you're wondering if you need these palettes, I will say this. These, I think, are more appropriate for makeup professionals, just from the sheer size and uh, amount of makeup you have at your disposal. For a beauty consumer, sure. I mean, you can make the argument that you need all these shades. I would say you would never have to buy another eyeshadow palette again, but we all know that's not the case. We get wooed several times a year to buy 
be even more eyeshadow. Yes, if you are just getting into makeup, I think these are designed in a way that will help you understand what colors to combine. And again, the way the colors are arranged, you will stay on this column, or maybe you'll try that row, or maybe you'll try this trio or that quad, and then you'll soon uh, familiarize yourself with the blending, and then you can venture and experience different colors, mixing cool and warm, mixing brown and green, and not having to stay in these sections, but become more confident in combining the colors in your own way and not necessarily having to follow Natasha's system presented here. I adore these original palettes. They definitely make me nostalgic because I bought these back in February of 2016. It was one of my most expensive makeup purchases and to see them now and I keep them in my drawer in my room. I do not store makeup in my bathroom. You don't want moisture to be a thing when it comes to your makeup storage. So these have been kept dry and since they're next to a wall that's right outside, it's next, just next to the brick, okay? This corner tends to be very cool in my room, so my shadows, despite the fact that I have had them since 2016, they still work. They don't smell, they, they look smooth, they feel smooth, and to me, it's just classic Natasha Denona in terms of the formula, the color stories, everything here in these big mama palettes are extraordinary. At the same time, she released the 228 pans. She also has the 10 panners. So these are all singles that are, again, in the entirety of her single collection, as well as can be found in the five panners. So in all, you're looking at 66 shades total. But the two black shades, the blackest black and the blackest gold rush shades, they are held as separate singles. And the reason why Natasha has the black shadows separate from the palettes is because she feels that black shadows can be very powdery, can spread through the palette and possibly change the shades because if it's dusting around, we don't want that to happen. So she has the black shadows separate in a single compact and all the other shades, either in the 28 pan palettes or the 10 pan palettes. Here I think is definitely uh, more approachable in terms of it just being 10 and not 28. These you can wear solo. You see you have the purple, teal, and the blues here that are, again, very creamy and shiny. The fact that you can blend these by themselves without having to use a matte, I think very convenient. You also have the more gold champagne shades here to utilize as inner corner highlight or brow bone highlight. Yes, you don't have a, a skin tone, depending on your skin tone matte in here to blend out these shades, but again, they're so smooth that I don't think it necessary and perhaps nice for that person that likes to just use one eyeshadow. They don't need the 10 eyeshadows per eye. They're fine with slapping it on with a fluffy shader. Something Natasha uh, emphasized when covering her 28 pan palettes in terms of which tools are best to use with her formula is like a chunky fluffy shader. Do I have one here to show you? Let me see. This is my uh, Sonya G Kiyaki Mini Blender. The Excuse me, a mini jumbo blender. The jumbo blender is one of my most favorite shapes from Sonia G, but you see, although shaped like a, a typical shader brush, it has a nice thickness to it that is uh, perfect for picking up product and then using the fluffy edges to then blur it through your crease. And that is the ideal type of brush that Natasha loves to use with her shadows and she had demonstrated to do so. You wiggle the brush back and forth to pick up enough product on the actual brush and then on placing it on the lid you have the color there and you can use the brush to fluff the edges and just look at that beautiful blend here even on my arm and i i agree i think this will be the best type of brush to use with natasha's classic formula again with the high pearl and mica content something that's fluffy enough but has the right amount of density 
excuse me to pick up the shadow from the pan and lay the right amount on your lid so it stays on your lid doesn't fall to your under eyes and to have enough fluff on the edge of the brush to then blend out the actual shadow is an ideal situation now we come to october of 2016 just a month later we now have the star palette the star palette and i have an interesting relationship i returned this palette a few times full disclaimer i i just did not understand its is greatness in terms of how to combine the shades the expectations this actually when i had visited natasha denona's store in new york the associates mentioned that this is natasha's favorite palette i don't know if that's still true to this day but at the time it was we have two new formulas introduced here in the star palette the creamy matte formula and the chroma crystal formula now you can see from this palette that we got wines uh, burgundies browns this really nice duochrome here on the center and the new chroma crystal formula which was also found in the pots. I don't know when those were introduced to the brand, but for instance, Cosmo here, and the Chroma Crystal formula is represented by the letter K. This is more like a topper shade. So, should make sure I'm swatching the right shade. You have a lot of shine here where placed on the lid, it has some texture. You just have to work it in. It has texture really nice shine and one of you has suggested i do this with uh, pat's formulas because i do uh, they are correct when you have these type of twinkle moments best seen under a, a light so you can see here just more twinkle than what exists from the metallic we found in the 28 pans. This new Chroma Crystal formula definitely is presenting a lot more shine and dazzle. I would recommend you apply this on a primer, maybe on a glitter glue just to ensure the pigments actually stick. And we have the new creamy matte formula that definitely has a little more body, okay, than her originally formulated mattes found in her 28 pans. So you can see there's a little more dryness to the mattes in her 28 pan palettes as opposed to now what's found in her star palette. I was having issues with the star palette because at the time when I was just getting into makeup, I was following, you know, the the standard beauty influencer formula of putting the transition first and then putting another shade first when hold on i gotta put lotion on my hands they're so dry excuse me but when you see natasha's video she starts with uh, a dark matte and plants it right at the outer corner of the lid and then she'll follow up with a lighter matte to blend out those edges. So her makeup application style is very different from a beauty YouTuber's. And not to say that either is right or wrong. I think it all depends on your own makeup technique, what you find is easier to follow. I do enjoy her technique from time to time to switch it up where you would take this color for instance with the big fluffy brush i had just shown minutes before plop that color on the outer part of your lid and then follow up with a lighter shade to blend those edges because i found before i was going in with the lighter shade first and when going in with these darker shades i didn't get the intensity I was expecting. And I think it was because when layering a creamy mat on a creamy mat, I don't think it an ideal setup to get the color richness that these can present solo. Meaning if I had applied this on its own, right on my lid on top of my primer, I would get a lot more intensity of color versus layering this over one of the lighter shades, which I was doing at the time and I could not, I just, I'm like, maybe it's me. I don't know how to apply makeup. I didn't know how to apply makeup the Natasha Denona way. And ever since I had practiced Natasha's makeup technique and returned to the star palette, is definitely one of my faves, especially with just these cooler browns and antique rustic shades. You know what this looks like, right? It looks like Gigabyte. Except not a baked formula. Spectrum is a chroma crystal formula. 
but it has like that same rustic vibe, doesn't it? It's, it's totally different from the the blitz formula from gigabyte in pat's subversive i think that has a little more shine just because of the nature of the shade but you know not sleeping on spectrum whatsoever i think this is a beautiful color and it just you know you can't get enough i can't get enough of that shine i think it's so pretty and when paired with another brown in here this one, it's more, it's like a cooler matte, I think lovely. All that to say, the Star Palette, even with my back and forth in deciding if I wanted to keep it, if, if it was good or not, is one of my most favorite color stories found in the Natasha Denona portfolio. And I think encourages her makeup technique and exploring that further when using these shades and getting the most out of the star palette in terms of what the formula can offer and the beautiful looks you can create. We have arrived May 2017. And although this is not my favorite palette, but I did paint my nails yesterday because I was dying to see this shade in action is Firecracker from Sir Colors for year, their Year of the Tiger limited edition release. And we have Jupiter from Starly. And I'm like, this looks like <laughs> The Sunset Palette. The Sunset Palette. Come on, you got it. You're getting nostalgic, aren't you? I could feel it. This is what I have on my eyes as well. I, I dipped into it for today's guide video. This was Natasha's first 15 pan palette. What we just saw from Star was 18 shades. Here we have 15 in the originally sized format with the foam pan frame, which by the way, uh, any anywhere from the 28 pans on, these you can take out. You can take these out. You just have to use a very thin spatula like this one here, very thin on both sides and just nudge these out because Natasha being a professional makeup brand and, and academy, she made sure as a pro you have that option. The Sunset Palette, when released in May of 2017, highly anticipated. Uh, you still have the creamy matte formula that was introduced in the Star Palette. Two unique duochrome shades. I believe the duochromes here with, again, the plastic overlay, I know we all love. Mandarin is this orange to gold which again, look, it just matches my nails. This has a strong yellow shift. I'm running out of space. I have that placed here on the inner part of my eye. The second duochrome, I believe here, let's see, huh? Morgana, which is this beautiful coral peach flip type of a shade really nice so i'm sure just by looking at this palette sunset vibes all the way you know hinokami kagura okay from tanjiro <laughs> this is the sun breathing palette <laughs> even though there are browns in here and people might automatically think "Ooh, that's a an essential all neutral palette i would say not quite because of the red and the yellow and the strong hued orange duochromes here, this leans a little more beyond than neutral essential for me. You can definitely achieve daily looks, but you could also bump it up by introducing the red shade here, which is called Panjin. Panjin has a lot of punch. Listen, you can apply this all on its own, all over the lid and crease and just have that fiery look and dust the edges with Morgana, or excuse me, Bermuda, which is like the peachy pink matte found in here. And the Chroma Crystal shades, these have incredible shine. This in particular, this one is called Abade, Abade, Obade. I'm the, I'm the worst. I should have researched this before I pressed record. I'm sorry. All that to say, shiny. I mean, definitely imbues that sunset inspiration. I think this nailed it in terms of the color story here, how one might interpret the sunset. I think all the, the facets of the sun are represented in this palette. And you have mattes in here. I think this one, this is not a cream to powder. The cream to powder was first introduced in, I believe, 
uh, October 2017 in Joya and Aris. Aries. Even though this mat kind of like it did something weird on me, it, it looks a little. It looked like it would have been a metallic, but it's actually a matte shade. And what I have on the majority of the lid, really soft and easy to blend. Not as powdery as the other mattes in here, like Volcano. This is more of a traditional powder matte has really nice color to it, okay? Can be used to smoke out the lid or line the lash line. Again, even though I had mentioned, I don't think this is, I wouldn't consider this a neutral palette despite the warm browns included. I find this is really great for someone who likes the neutrals, but prefers warm yellow, red, definitely orange, gold, and the bronzes in here, I think just beautiful when all combined. And as I mentioned before, with all the palettes thus far, no matter what you encounter in, in terms of row, column, quad, trio, duo, you'll have a look at your disposal. You can combine these two, you got a look, and you can just trek over to one of the lighter shades to create a highlighter depending on your skin tone. If you wanted to go more avant-garde, you could apply this shade all over the lid, maybe smoke it out with the, the dark brown and then fluff the edges with the yellow. So there are a lot of possibilities in Sunset and it's just classic Natasha Denona for me. Like this was the first palette. Besides Star, Star I definitely uh, understood that galactic cosmic feel presented in the palette given the name Spectrum, Galaxia, and all those other inspirations. Sunset was definitely a deliberate color story inspo for me and when using it today I'm like wow this is this is really beautiful. I have to use it more often. I, I forget because this is this is why I have to stop buying so much eyeshadow palettes fam. I'm looking on my bed now. I have so many Natasha Denona palettes. I really should just get back into it and definitely want to revamp my tutorials and just go back into these again. How does that sound? It's gonna take me forever but it'll keep me on track not buying anymore. Wanna guess which one's next? What dropped in September 2017? My personal favorite Natasha Denona palette. That's right, we got Lila. Lila for me, just, I, I can't speak any more about it. It's beyond my brain cell function right now. Lila is my favorite, and this was Natasha's most favorite color story. Her is, at the time she had said purple, was her favorite color scheme. If that changed, I don't know. You have classic Natasha Denona Metallic, the creamy mattes in here. To have a purple palette with this range, in terms of lilacs, magenta, royal purple, warm and cool, it's so comprehensive and I just adore the fact that you can create still purple theme, but different, right? Wine then more vibrant, then cooler. It's all there and I just can't get enough. And my most favorite part is the majority of these metallics, like the ones I, I showed in previous palettes, they have this just creaminess to them. When you apply these by themselves and blend it out, look look at that, that blurred effect on the formula. And also the mattes, I think, are uniquely created to allow and anchor these cooler and warmer shades. I love the lilac grayish mauve tones found in the mattes. It gives the metallics a little more character. So that was the more cooler lavender place in the palette. But then you got, you got colors like Cyclone. Cyclone is more of like your reddish plum in the same palette. I absolutely love that. And then you have the mattes to pair with those shades, more in terms of like the, the more wine, plummy tone. You got like this beautiful magenta shade, Viola. Viola is just 
gorgeously vibrant. Yes, it's not like Night Creature from Pat. Night Creature has more of that sparkle. This has more of like a sheen, a glow to it. But I think that perfect, especially, you know, not everyone is down with those types of textures. I get it. But if you want the color still and a little bit of shine to exist on your lid, Amethyst, Amethyst is like your royal purple shade, definitely leaning more cool. Oh, but when paired with viola and just everything in here is absolutely perfect. I was simping for the Lila palette in I think my top five Natasha Denona video and those clips were posted on Natasha Denona stories. I remember I was going through the train the subway turnstile looked at my phone, which I shouldn't have been. I eyes up, eyes up, Alicia, know where you're walking. When I saw that, I nearly lost my marbles. I was like, wow, she really watched this. <laughs> Me simping over her Lila palette. And I'm still simping over it now because it's truly one of my most favorite just curations from Natasha. So intelligently thought out. I, I see the inspiration. I understand it. I love the fact that the purples presented here are from just a broad spectrum of color. It's not just one type of purple. It's the plummy, the magenta, the lilac, the warm, the cool. As I mentioned before, it's all in this palette and the formulas, again, just majestic. Easy to blend from the metallics to the creamy mattes. And you know, I just, I just can't get enough. I can't get enough. Oh, we ran out of Bioderma. Hold on, I gotta get some more. All this talking, you know, I had to take a gargle break. We have arrived March 2018. The Tropic Palette. Tropic Palette was, I don't remember the the response to Tropic Palette. Well, this is the first time we have a plastic format as before we saw with Leela sunset and just back through her 20 pan palettes there were like that plastic squish <laughs> this the soft plastic feel the material this is a harder plastic and for the first time we have no plastic overlay finally we have the names on the plastic frames and the pinholes again indicating that this palette is magnetic you can switch out the pans as you like this was an interesting concept i think uh it was nice to see the more vibrant colors included with the more neutral tones in here just quickly seeing my notes natasha had wanted to create an easy layout where no matter what row you ran into that was a look for instance if you wanted to use this row you could use these shades to set up the frosty blue shade How, however you wanted to do it but i remember the number one critique was that tiger lily and exotic these were very tight in the pan and people were saying how they got hard pan right away and they were very hard to pick up right that's with the finger swatch if i were to go in with my jumbo blender and do the wiggle wiggle that's where i think we ran into problems right like it was very it was very tough to pick up with the brush but in true Natasha Denona fashion, she usually would pick these shades up with her finger anyway. This is exotic. This is extra tight in the pan. Like I had to really go in and pick up enough color to actually get it on a swatch. And I understand people who are just not into that. They don't like the finger blend, but something I failed to mention in my Pat McGrath Ultimate Guide video and also some of my tutorials is that you could use the good old sponge applicator. Those foam sponge tip applicators, I think will be prime for these types of formulas, especially tight in the pan. So the sponge tip just has more texture than a brush to pick up that pigment, especially when it's tight like this. So once you figure that out, I think you will have a, a marvelous time with the Tropic palette. You could actually omit these shades if you wanted to create a softer daily look with the pastel peaches and pinks. I think really nice with peach puff and sangria. You have like a nice gradient presented there if you wanted to just use those shades. Goosey is actually uh, unique in that. It has like a 
it's like a blue shift in there. The sparkles are blue, so nice to pair with sangria and peach puff. You have limoncello, nice to have as a highlight shade. Or if you just wanted to go all wham bam with the blues, you could stick to the bottom row and pair Laguna with Tiger Lily, Xena with any of the shades in here if you wanted to use Xena with Venture Taupe. So I don't use the Tropic palette as often because again, I feel like I either have to fully commit to the, like, the vibrant blues or find somewhere in the middle, but that definitely challenges me in terms of thinking outside the box, right? You don't have to do all blues. You don't have to do all neutrals. You could experiment and see how does vintage taupe look like with exotic, or maybe just apply Xena all over the lid. Xena is, although a creamy matte powder shade, I think really nice to just have that wash of lavender across the lid and keep it very simple and maybe use the lighter shades to blend out the edges. So, you know, I have to, I definitely have to go back into Tropic. I think it's one of those palettes where I have to spend more time with, but I would say the main critique are for Exotic and Tiger Lily, those metallics, they're not the same formula found in Star, in the 28 Pan, Sunset, or Lila. They don't have that same smoothness and easy pickup. You definitely have to use your finger or a sponge tip eyeshadow applicator, and I think that will bring you the most success. Up next, dropped in September of 2018, we have the Safari Palette. Safari Palette is Natasha's first all matte palette. We have all new shades here and people either hated it or they loved it. And I do think this was the palette that you needed to rely on Natasha's technique. Otherwise, you will not be happy. For instance, if you try to blend out these shades, I found that some people had issues with keeping the shade on their lid. So if you started to blend out Fata Morgana, then the intensity will fade and it's like nothing would stick. You then had to definitely pick it up, bring it on to the outer lid, and then use a lighter color to blur the edges. Instead of going in, a, like I was explaining with the star palette, going in with like a medium lighter shade first and then trying to blend out with a deeper shade, you, you needed to go in with the darker shades first, for sure. I think that is the best approach for Safari. Definitely more of that color blocking feel. But I just love, you know, like Amhara and Masai, these mattes, the colors are just beautiful. And when you pair these together, I think a lovely combination. You have the grayer greens here, Fata Morgana is like a deep teal, the the stronger orange and red tones. You could definitely just use tamarind all over the linen crease and call it a day. Maybe shade it with a little bit of shea or voodoo. You, you know, you could do a lot here, but I understand why someone would skip on Safari because if you don't like all mattes, this is an all matte palette. And if you wanted to strictly stick to it, then any look you create will, will not have any shine, glow, or, or sheen whatsoever because there are just no metallics in here. You will then have to rely on Aya or Malia or something else depending on your skin tone for a highlight shade, right? To create that effect. Unless you dip out and use a highlighter shade that you used on your complexion on that particular day, then sure, you can use a shimmer instead of a matte shadow. I have to go back into Safari. I think I haven't used it in quite some time. And looking at it now, with all the different brushes that I have collected, I am very curious to hop back in and just give it another shot. Maybe helping you if you have Safari, you haven't even used it yet. You're like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to approach this palette. Maybe this will be the one to kick off my Natasha Denona tutorials. We shall see, but again, to, to quickly reiterate, I think this is best for someone who just likes mattes. You don't want to deal with the shimmers or the metallics. You love your matte shades. You love the color blocking approach where just laying colors 
juxtaposed in a way that is a little more vibrant in its presentation and not having any shine on your lids and creating the impact by relying on the shades themselves then then safari will be for you december 2018 we had the pleasure of meeting the gold palette gold palette it was interesting because i had certain expectations when i first laid my eyes on the gold palette when i saw these mustard tones i was like yes i'm there sign me up put me behind the velvet rope but then i started combining them and then my enthusiasm just started to dwindle and i think it was because again i was just approaching natasha denona palace with that beauty influencer formula without understanding the colors first and just layering too much what am i talking about for instance if i were to go oh by the way we're back to the the soft foam format for the gold and we got the plastic overlay again <laughs> i hope these years are correct i'm going by natasha's youtube channel i hope these colors are correct if not what am i gonna do for instance aria aria is one brown here and then we have teak right teak is the other brown here so aria and teak aria you can see is more beige teak is definitely more neutral right and yes you would think when you apply them on top of each other they will maintain that same distinction they don't that's what i had to learn and just pull myself away from layering these shades and instead this is sandstone the other brown use them separately because when you swatch them you can clearly see the differences in color and undertone sandstone's giving you more yellow aria a little more like this is like a beige brown and teak is more neutral and of course my beloved Dijon. Dijon is like your mustard brown. I love to see it. Love that it's in here. And Log is your, your deep brown here. Definitely cool bark in, in color. And I think what stand out is you probably already noticed we have Python, which is a cream to matte formula. This has like that creamy type of a feel. It feels moussey in the pan but applies like a powder. And this formula is designed to apply a little lighter than how it looks in pan. So that's why Natasha usually presents these deeper colors in this formula as it could be easier to use. It's not as intimidating as it would if it was, for instance, a powder formula like Fata Morgana found in Safari. That deep teal in a powder formula, definitely tougher to handle than the cream to powder format. So I like that it's in there for Python. And for Aurora, this just teal, crystal blue, beautiful shine. Of course, you could pair it with Python. That was a terrible swatch. This is a little more drier than her other metallic. So I would wet that shade or just use a better pickup with your finger brass is just a lovely look at that shine i mean appropriately named the gold palette for obvious reasons but to my point before i think this palette truly shines if you hold yourself back and just use two or three shades at a time. Instead of mixing together the more medium tone shades, use one medium tone shade alone and then go in with log or use the metallics first and then go in with these other mattes to blend out the edges. And that's why, again, like I have said with all the palettes I presented so far, I want to dive back in get into tutorial mode and now that i have more perspective on natasha denona palettes i now am really excited to just get in there and apply these shades again with her technique with my different brushes now that i have acquired and use these palettes for crying out loud lime chrome ooh, lime chrome 
with Aurora or any shade. I mean, Lime Crone is Natasha's VR Fire Opal, except I think easier to use, still has nice shine, but doesn't have the same twinkle effect as Pat's Fire Opal, but again, Fire Opal is a lot drier in nature because of the, the VR formula. Lime Chrome is a more, it's a dual chrome, but it has more of a slip to it and I think easier to use overall. Now, I do consider Gold Palette to be a lot more neutral friendly than Sunset. Gold Palette, if you love the more cooler toned browns with that one mustard brown, then you're gonna love gold. Even with the teal shades in there, those are just like your wham bam moments if you wanted to include a teal into your eye look from time to time. But as you saw, it's all mostly neutral cool browns with the bronzes and the gold that I think have a place in someone's makeup collection. If you wanted one Natasha Denona palette, and we'll get to Biba in a minute, cause Biba is the, at the time when it was released, was like the neutral essential palette for the Natasha Denona brand. Gold can be, a neutral palette, but definitely more shiny gold leaning. I consider it to be like a holiday palette. It was, and it was dropped in December, so I think you can recognize the intention there. As I just said, with with Biebs, <laughs> Biba dropped in March of 2019, and this was Natasha's attempt at creating an essential, multi-use, user-friendly palette wanted to present all neutral shades and she had told the story of when her mother took her to the fashion house Biba, which is like bohemian chic, like muted colors, the burgundies and the musters and the, the browns. And that is exactly what you will find here in Biba. Now you see that each row has more like the yellow browns, the middle more like the burgundies, and the bottom you have the cool tones. And Spot, as you saw, the black shade in here, Biba is the first palette to have a black shadow in there. Because what I had mentioned before with speaking about the 28 pan palettes, and at the time, Natasha only had the blackest black shadow as a separate pan or separate compact is because she found having a powder black shadow definitely color contaminated all the other shadows and that could be a problem. But if it was presented in the cream to powder formula, which is here, a lot more tighter, does not spread around like a traditional powder matte does, then, you know, all the other colors are good. So Spot is the first black found in a Natasha Denona palette. And with all the other neutrals in here, again, you have the yellow browns, you have the more burgundies, and then with Mini Biba recently being released, that was considered to be, if Biba had an extra row, then that extra row will be more like mauve rose tones. Biba at the time was a crowd favorite, and I think still is. When people try to decide which Natasha Denona palette they want to go for, Biba catches their eyes immediately because it's definitely more user-friendly at just by optics alone. You have the neutral shades, different tones of them here. You have a three, how many shades we got for the creamy to powder? Let me see. You got four cream to powder shades in here. This is rayon, which I think, ooh, running out of space, hold on. What are the most beautiful shades just in all of Natasha Denona's eyeshadow palette collection? Just like that rosy brown, I think beautiful all over the lid. It's almost like that sickly look brown, <laughs> that which is why I love Retro so much and we'll get there in a minute. You only have three metallics in here. You have Rustic, which is like a golden bronze. You have Monroe, which is more champagne pink. And you have Shine, which is more of like a golden champagne. So these are your only metallics and then you compare them with any of the different mattes in here, whether they're the cream to powder matte or the powder powder matte, traditional creamy matte. But you can't go wrong with Biba. I definitely will recommend this palette to any 
new makeup consumer encountering Natasha Denona for the first time. It's easy to navigate, again, as all her palettes are designed to do, no matter what quadrants, duo, row, column you run into, it's a look. If you just wanted to go straight down, that's a look. You want to go straight down here. This is interesting, actually. You got lots of warm shades going on in this row. And to, and to introduce spot, it's going to add intensity. But you could also just stay here. Go this way. And you have spot sculpture, which is a... a actually, I consider this to be like a warmer light gray. And tusk you have to blend out spot or you know use it however you like. I definitely love the tones found in Biba. Again, yellow browns and rosy browns are one of my most favorite neutrals. It's nice to have these different tones at your disposal. And it also challenges you to think of neutrals in a, a, in a different way. Like there is different tone of neutral, cool, warm, rosy mustard grayish they all fall in that same category and to have these options now in biba i think is extraordinary and definitely you know i said lila is my favorite 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 well i hold on i i know retro is my favorite too but i get there in a minute biba is definitely one of my most favorite natasha denona palettes ever i think it is more neutral than sunset uh, it is more neutral than gold, more user-friendly than those palettes as well. The colors are easy to use, but how to pair the colors together, I think it's easier to do that in Biba, just my opinion. So if this is your first time encountering Natasha Denona and you're like, which one should I buy? I would go with Biba, for sure. Next up, in June of 2019, when we first saw this palette online, automatically assumed it was, well, let me speak for myself. I automatically assumed it was going to be the same size as we have seen in previous 15 pan palettes. If you read, however, how much it cost and thought, whoa, $65 versus $115, how, how much did the originally 15 pan? I forgot. 129, 129, 115, where'd you get that number from? And you thought, whoa, is what's happening. Then you realized the pans were smaller. It's a smaller palette altogether. A new palette size has been released. People were elated. Cause I haven't, I didn't mention this before, shame on me, and it being a, a guide video and all. Natasha Denona palettes are expensive. The 28 pan palettes we saw first, 239 I believe. The 15 pan palettes, 129. These are very expensive. And I think, again, appropriate for a makeup pro who this is their career, they, they could expense that-ish, okay? For someone whose career is not in beauty, that's a lot of money for an eyeshadow palette, a lot of makeup for one person. To now have this at a more digestible price point, in, in, in price, digestible both in, in price and size, this, I think, was the most consumer-friendly, well, hold on. When she did her mini five pan palettes, I think that is her most consumer-friendly format. If you still want it 15 shades from Natasha Denona, then I think, of course, this is ideal. Here we have Sunrise in the all hard plastic design, again, with the pinholes in the back. This is an extension of the beloved Sunset palette that we saw earlier. So here we have the Sunset, here we have Sunrise, both ends of the day both different color stories. Sunset is giving you more orange red. Sunrise, more orange, pink, purple, right? Which I would argue also could happen in a, in a sunset, but you know, to which is own. Definitely depending on where you are, sky-wise, angle-wise, season-wise, calendar-wise, the sky could take on many hues, but they could also take on these beautiful violet pink hues that I have seen from time to time and it is absolutely 
remarkable. So Natasha captured that color story here. We have all the mattes actually are the classic creamy matte formula. We have a different metallic thing going on. Some metallics in here like Phlox and Poppy are reminiscent of her Lila palette metallics very smooth to the touch not necessarily super shiny but still have a nice sheen to them and we have these newer formulas like aster that has a little more texture to it but they serve as like a light dose veil it has a strong base yes i understand that but it doesn't have the same body as poppy and phlox so you have like these more scatter effect metallics that are not they don't have a strong base but they have really nice shine as you see here great to layer azalea same concept as presented in aster very light this is more of like a, a peach thing going on nice to have these more orange and dandelion tone yellow mattes these are in the creamy matte formula so they they pack quite a punch and as you can probably suspect you gotta be a little more careful when layering these suckers i think you well I didn't run into muddying up the shades when combining, let's say if I wanted to combine Carnelian and Glory. Glory is your more magenta matte. I would do Glory first and then lightly with Carnelian just to blur the edges. And I do think that is a lovely gradient. You also have Morgan, which is more of like a coral peach here. The, the lights are ex overexposing it a bit, but that's also really nice to have as a blurring shade. And then you have these beautiful bronzy, champagne-y, more like subdued shimmers at the end. If you wanted to get more hot and spicy, you could head over to Aster. Awakening is a lovely duochrome moment can be worn exclusively on the lid or on the inner corner depending on how you want to create the look so sunrise is you know i can understand for someone who is more neutral in terms of their makeup approach they definitely love the browns this the biba colors of the natasha denona collection these are more vibrant they deliver a little more punch the same perspective i hold for sunset even though you have more browns in there than i believe what exists in sunrise sunrise you definitely have to be in a certain mood for although you can definitely stay within this realm but you know if you're deeper than me then you have to go in this realm and i don't know if you necessarily want to slap on a a wine or magenta hued matte for a daily look some people do you know what i'm saying but depending on your makeup vibe and what you consider to be comfortable in terms of the colors you like to wear on a daily basis sunrise is not going to give you a whole lot of options in that department but i do love the inspiration delivered here presented here and these are definitely one of the, my most favorite colors to use ever it will be an impactful look right whenever you're combining purples and magentas and and deep orange yellows you will make a statement. So depending, again, how you like to approach your makeup will determine if Sunrise is a staple for you or not. Nah. But one of my most favorite, definitely, color stories presented by Natasha Denona. We have arrived at Natasha's five-year anniversary ever since she had released her 28 Pam palette back in 2016. We are now in September of 2019 and man, oh man, this was one of the most exciting releases for Natasha. This was a very exciting time, okay? We, we had just saw the new MIDI format back in summer the, that same summer 2019 now we have the beloved metropolis palette this was to celebrate her 28 pan palette release again five years ago from this day she had released or the the 28 pan palettes everyone noticed them okay everyone wanted them now instead of releasing another palette in that same size she released it smaller than the 28 pan palettes and i absolutely 
adore this palette color story. Now we went over the different inspirations depending on the palette, but this really spoke to me because Natasha Denona wanted to capture a post-industrial age, 1920s art deco, great Gatsby feel in terms of the era. You have these more brassy, muted colors found here. And when I spoke about Metropolis in a video, I have posted like my own little inspo board I put together and I, I understood immediately what Natasha was going for. I love that you have the olives and the bronzes, but you also have the teals in here. And this was actually one of the most cream to powder shadows we had in one palette. We had four in Biba, which was a lot at the time, but now in this one, one, two, three, four, we have five. We might have more than that. Hold on. No, we got 10. We got, excuse me, we got 10. We have 10 cream to powder formulas in here. And the importance of that, again, is Natasha likes to rely on the cream to powder formula for the more intimidating shades. You see here with the forest green and the teal shades and the turquoise and the blues. When you have these in a, <laughs> running out of room again. In a powder, they're tougher to blend, absolutely, but when in cream to powder, it's a little easier. And she had also mentioned, this actually was when Sephora was going on and a bunch of new makeup, remember that time, fam? Bunch of makeup was being released and Natasha presented on stage at the Sephora event and she had explained that this cream to powder formula found in Metropolis is a little more waxy feeling than her previous cream to powder formula. So this is like cream to powder 2.0 found in Metropolis, if you're wondering. The critique that many people had with this palette was that these shades looked similar. Right. I have to say Natasha is very detailed when it comes to layering color. She's all about the transition and it's not like transition in the same beauty influencer way like, you know, the skin tone to your crease. No, she's about the transition from one color to another. She loves to create those gradients and that's why you might find shades that are, upon seeing it in the pan, closely related, but in fact, they're different in terms of the undertone. So when you create these different gradients, they just appear richer when all is said and done, when everything has been blended together, it just has a lot more impact. It has a lot more vibrancy, more dimension. And that's very important. It's not so like this color and that color. Like, no, we gotta bring it from this tone of brown into like a softer tone of brown into a lighter. Again, very detailed in that respect. So I like the fact that she had three different tone cream to matte formulas. Even upon glancing at them, they appear the same. You gotta put yourself in Natasha Denona's brain. She's not just going to, she's not gonna skip steps, okay? And I recognize that mostly in the Metropolis palette, especially when you see that with this blue, you have like a cooler turquoise, and then with this one, you have a warmer turquoise, and I think that's great. You have options now to, again, create that same gradient that just looks very seamless in nature. I just focus on the teals and the blues and the forest green, but you got, look look at this. You got the reds and the oranges, these burnt muted shades, the brown still, the gold, shiny, okay. Which one is this? Blaze? Blaze, I think, was found in the mini Metropolis. So that's really shiny. I, I absolutely adore this palette. I love that there are 28 shades in here, but the pans are smaller, thing that is less intimidating. Definitely, yes, still intimidating to begin with because you got 28 shades in here. It's nice to have the variety included in Metropolis, but since I love the inspiration behind it, that's why I stand behind this palette. And I also understand the argument 
of it being too much. Like, how do you approach this? Where do you begin? If you rely on Natasha's formula, encountering row, column, quadrant, trio, duo, whatever, it's a look. If you just wanted to put these shades together, it's a look. If you wanted to use this shade to blend that out, it's a look. You just wanted to use these two shades, it's a look. So the thinking has been done on our behalf, especially when it comes to Metropolis, I would heavily rely on following Natasha's formula in trying to create looks. Don't worry about what color you should combine with what. What color is next to that color? Just put it on and the look is done. I think that's the best way to approach Metropolis. And when you have uh, become more comfortable with these shades, then you can stray away from that formula and jump around however you like. I wouldn't recommend Metropolis for the beginner because again, it's a lot. It's a lot upon first glance, upon opening the palette. I think it, I would consider it to be an, an intermediate palette, intermediate. You've already done or have your fair share of palettes. You can now venture off and get more into it. Metropolis will be the one. Ooh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. More to go. <laughs> the Love Palette, January 2020. The second midi palette design introduced, you, as you can see, more pinks, more purples. There were some problems with the mattes. People were like, these mattes are too hard pan. They didn't like how they felt. And yes, depending on what palette you picked up, when I bought my first palette, my mattes were pretty hard pan. But when I swatched it in Sephora, it didn't feel the same. It was, they were softer. So I think there were inconsistencies in the Love palettes. Again, as I had experienced with others, red tone shades are a little tough to formulate. Generally, I think, maybe not. You're like, Lisa, you're making excuses. That's just, how I how I saw it, you know, say what you like down below. With like intense and heartbeat, definitely I can understand that when you swatched it, you're like, what is that? It doesn't have the same flow and color intensity found in Lila, but intense I thought was a nice consistency. Hearts is the more red tone in here. You know, that that pretty, it's a softer matte, so that looks nice. Soul, I think the same softer heartbeat, I think was like the, the problem shade. You have Commitment, which was your deep aubergine cream to powder formula. You had Dream, a lavender pastel cream to powder. And Trust, I think the other creamy matte shade. <laughs> You probably don't remember. It was fine. I thought it was fine. But this definitely is more color specific. You can see, as opposed to Sunrise, I guess Sunrise would be color specific too. Huh. Gold palette, you had your vibrant moments, but you still had a lot of neutrals with the bronzes and the, the cooler browns in there. There's, there's no brown in here. There's no neutrals in here. It's all red, pink, medium pink, light pink, purple. This is your, the Valentine, and this was released. This was released late January. I think it was, well, the video uploaded January 28th. So in anticipation of Valentine's Day, I don't think people really knew how to feel about the Love Palette. They liked it, but they definitely waited until it went on sale, which I think a lot of people did. So I, I like the Love Palette. I think the colors in here are really nice, especially when you take the time to create these looks. They could be really beautiful. And again, we'll have to uh, revamp my tutorials. I have a couple of Love Palette. Do I have any Love Palette videos do I have? I don't know. I'm more than happy to create a tutorial using the Love Palette because now looking at these shades, I'm like, whoa, these are pretty. Would I recommend it to be your first Natasha Denona palette unless you are just over your heels obsessed with pinks and purples. That's the only reason why I would understand you would go for this first over Biba, for instance. Or if you had your eye on it, 
definitely wait for it until it's on sale because it's so color specific to pay full price and i know 65 cheaper than 129 but you can get it for less than that for a story like this that you know you're not going to use as often i think is reasonable Ooh, we'll release the summer of 2020 at the time and this has changed the bronze palette definitely out of out of the middies one of my most favorite color stories this for me was like rusty hot red orange a different approach than what we see in the sunset palette one can argue you know this could be a sunset palette right with the exception of not including red red yellow yellow you have more of like muted brownish reds more this is like terracotta okay deserts that's the vibe is giving me and i just adore the fact although although that's like the the climate vibe if you will what inspired natasha's bronze palette is the different hues the the bronze metal can take on the bronze doesn't just come in one color it comes in several and when you see the different facets of a bronze metal it's not going to just be what we think of bronze you're gonna have your different tones in here which people argue you know why ain't you putting in like the greenish colors that could also happen in a bronze metal yeah she probably stuck to like one piece of it i do like how she included uh, the eggplant shade here. The eggplant paired with terracotta, one of my most favorite combinations. I adored the looks I created with this palette and I love the fact that she has a, a nice serving of metallics in here. We only have two cream to powder formulas found in deep dive and rhodium deep dive being like this beautiful aubergine and rhodium is like this mauvey lilac shade that for instance if you pair it with high degree look how beautiful that arrangement is i absolutely love it for the same reason why i love uh, bronze seduction extreme aubergine and like blitz flame together that combination is just out of this world i find you have the same experience here but a little more fleshed out right with again the the warmer muted browns this is suntan suntan pg brown all the way sundown not as vibrant as carnelian like was found in sunrise this is more of like a muted orange ridge is the the designated mustard brown not as yellow as what's found in the gold palette uh dijon dijon is like a cooler yellow brown mustard this has more of like a warmer yellow leaning mustard hue with the metallics adore the fact that you have more like golden bronze but then you have like muted bronze like more of a brown with palladium this is more of like a pinky bronze so ooh, this is just one of my most favorite palettes i have to use this again although the same reason why i would argue that i wouldn't consider sunset to be a, an essential palette like i do biba i would use bronze over sunset if i had to choose i know i put sunset on my eyes now just because my nails and inspiration was calling me however bronze for me is more daily friendly in that respect not more daily friendly than biba or glam we'll get to that in a moment but it has a little bit of punch it has a little bit of like hot and spicy for you it doesn't have a dark brown to create intensity with you are just left with deep dive i think nice to explore what it could be like to use deep dive as a wing liner when applied over the bronze metallics in here or even the reddish bronze metallics great opportunity to explore that possibility i'm gonna have to get into bronze too man i'm getting all excited over these natasha did on our palettes we have arrived at a <laughs> i was gonna say controversial because uh natasha decided or who 
I don't know if it was her or her team, whoever decided to do this, instead of just naming the shades with the glam palette that dropped in August of 2020, instead of naming the shades just a shade, she named the shade where it could go on the lid. And of course, as we all know, that is different for everybody. How she first introduced those shades catered to the lighter part of the spectrum. And then she had said, if you need to change it around, you could change it around. But people are like, well, how come you got to start with the lighter part of the spectrum and the people who can't rely on that format have to change it around? I, I totally understand that frustration. And that was definitely the, the argument against the glam palette. But I think when you use it and you just ignore the names and just see the colors as they are and reach for whatever shade you need for the eye look at the time. Glam palette is definitely one that Natasha wanted in her collection to be the all neutral palette. Now, neutral cool because there are no warm shades in here. Maybe with the exception of the center eyelid shade, which is this gold. That definitely leans warm for me, but the rest of the shades are cool neutral. And I think this is the first time that Natasha fully committed to a cooler neutral color story. As you see in Biba, it leans more. Although you have that last cool row, now we have an entire palette done in the midi format that actually was inspired an extension of the mini glam palette that released uh, last year. Uh, December 2019. So Mini Glam dropped December 2019 and the following Glam palette released in August. So a couple of months after that extension of Mini Glam, which I think was well received. So now we have 15 shades of cooler neutral tones. We do not have any cream to powders in here. It's all traditional creamy matte formula with a nice mixture of creamy metallics like what's found in the Lila palette with ones that have a little more texture to them. I would consider them to still be metallic, but some have a little more shine than others. And this is definitely like your office palette. If you're not into the bronze shades, I mean, those those rich terracotta, rusty shades, Metropolis, forget it. You can't use anything from that to go to the office, or maybe you can, I don't know. Depends what office you're going to. If you were looking for an essential palette that was even more essential than Biba, than, than Glam, Glam is for you. I would dare say this is great to create evening looks with. Uh, maybe not as intense, but you could use a black liner to intensify your lash line, maybe to deepen the outer corner and then go in with whichever, whether it be a metallic or a creamy matte to phase that out a little bit. So I like the Glam palette a lot. I think I have to use it more often because cooler shades, I think are, are vital to have in your collection if you wanted to pick two Natasha Denona palettes to have the Glam palette and the Biba palette, I think fantastic. Although I would love to see Biba in this format, don't know if that's feasible considering that she just released a mini Biba and usually she goes from mini to midi or original size to mini. Has she ever went from mini to midi? I don't know. I guess we should find out, but Glam is definitely one of the more neutral essential palettes from the Natasha Denona brand. And I think a great one to start with overall if, oh my gosh, I didn't notice that was there the entire time. I just realized my sweater was hanging behind me the entire time. I forgot to take it off. My apologies. What are you gonna do? 
I would say if you were wondering which one to start with in terms of which one to buy from Natasha Denona, then this would be a great one to start with. The shades, I think, are approachable. They're very easy to use. You just have your creamy matte and your metallic shades in there. You don't have anything crazy, okay? No creamy powder this or duochrome, chroma crystal that. Very simple in terms of what's included, the colors that are in the palette, and I think a really great place to start if you are looking to buy your first Natasha Denona palette. Ooh, we got Trio Chrome. Remember that one? <laughs> Trio Chrome dropped in November of 2020. And this was a unique format for Natasha in that you had the Trio Chrome colors down the middle and then you had all mattes flanking the edges, if you will. Now, people were like, really, you think those are Trio Chrome, Natasha Denona? If you were into the indie brands, those Trio Chromes are exquisitely beautiful. And I can understand if you're used to that. If you see these, you're like, huh? For instance, Scarab. Scarab, I think, one of the stronger a trio chromes found here kinetic is a little weak i think kinetic is hard to uh pick out what the trio chrome is actually doing and you have color flip color flip i think is like i think this might be like the sexual terrestrial of the group but that's supposed to have a green flip harder to see i think scarab i think is the strongest before this release, I think Natasha did her, the Chrome Liquid? What's the name of that product? All that to say, we don't have any cream to powder mattes in here. It's all creamy matte. I consider this to be like a watercolor palette. Not in terms of what it delivers, but just the, the looks. You have a lot of pastels in here. You have Naga, Redox, Ion, really like soft washes of color that when you pair them with the metallic trio chromes in here i think quite beautiful really nice to color block with i think that you could use the lighter pastels to not only blur the edges of the darker mattes found in here but you could also use them as blocks of highlight and to create more impactful moments for instance androgyte androdite excuse me i cannot read this when you pack it on it's like a, a mint pastel and really nice if you just wanted to place that on the lid or on the inner corner if you wanted to pair these shades with the trio chrome metallics in here you can so yes you don't have to buy this palette at all if people when they're like what natasha palette should i buy should i start with should i even bother looking at trio chrome i think one you can get on sale this is a specific concept if you will not going to be daily friendly i don't well daily friendly is different for everyone okay let me just put it out there if you're one to use these types of colors on a daily basis then sure but if you're like a Biba type of person, a glam type of person, I don't know how well Trio Chrome will find itself in your collection. If you would use it as often, if you would use it at all. If you want to get a little more adventurous and maybe not go into like Circo Loco territory, which we'll get to in a minute, then I think this is a good middle ground because although colorful, much softer, again, as I mentioned with the pastels, and the the lighter mattes that you can experiment with in terms of their role using them to create gradient effects or create more lighted blocking effects so i haven't uh, used trio chrome in quite some time but i would like to get into it because i think the colors are very pretty and it definitely pushed me to think outside the box in regards to how I approach these colors. And now we have what I think was the most fun filled colorful palette Natasha has ever released, more so than her blue purple 28 pan, more so than her tropic palette, but dropped in March of 2021, Circo Loco. We have the bigger 15 palette format here, all hard plastic with the pinholes again at the back. Just look at this sucker. 
when I saw this, I was like, yes, she, Natasha, fully committed to an all colorful palette. There are no tans and browns and, and black shades in here, okay? We don't have the neutral browns. Get those out of here. We have all colors in terms of the mattes. We have a creamy matte. We have cream to powder. We have the metallic. I mean, this is a lot of fun. This released last year, and although I loved it to death, I still do, I didn't present it as my best of because... I have to be in a certain mood for this. Like, I have to be ready to have more arm space and do these swatches. To really commit to something that is going to bring definitely that circus vibe. And I recognize that immediately, especially with the names Razzle Dazzle, Flip, Canon. Where's the contortion? We got Aerialists. Okay, I'll take that. I think. So for the person who admires Natasha Denona, but they didn't make uh, the push yet because they were like, listen, I love color. I don't care about the Biba and the glams of the world, all right? Give me something that's powwow in my face. And this was it. Again, look at the spectrum of color presented here. It's just so comprehensive and so much fun. I, I really had a blast using this palette. It definitely pushes you to think outside the box. Although I did mention in my original Circo Loco video that I would not recommend that you rely on this palette to change you. You know, people are like, oh, maybe I could be a colorful eyeshadow. You have to make that change within yourself. I don't think you should rely on the on a palette to do it for you. If you are eyeing this palette, yes, I think a good supplementary palette, sure. Mm, too expensive, I think, to be a supplementary palette. Much like how I said about Bronze Seduction, I think Okay, you either get this, oh, hey, light change. You get this on sale and use it from time to time. You want to get it full price, but you're one to use these colors all the time, then that's understandable. Better, you can still, again, any any full price palette, anything from any brand you can get on sale is, is advantageous. But I, I just emphasize the fact that if you love to use Biba and you have not used anything else except those types of colors, I don't think you're gonna like Circo Loco. Sure, you can experiment with it, but again, this is for the color lover, combining different hues and textures, just creating those high impact, vibrant looks you are gonna get from Circo Loco. One of, I think, the best performing palettes in terms of the color richness and the shine, absolutely faux show. We'll definitely have to do a Circo Loco tutorial soon. And the design, I love the design. It definitely embodies just the the whimsical nature of witnessing, of watching a, a circus show performance. And I think it is beautifully captured here in this palette. We're down to the last two. Zendo, the Zendo, the mini Zendo, excuse me, released back in October of 2019. And as we approached May of 2021, we were introduced to the mini size Zendo palette. Now, Natasha had mentioned that Zendo to her in terms of being a part of the, the meditation category of things, the yin and yang, the how nature plays a role in one's meditation, in inspiring them to be calm. In, in terms of embracing nature and its powers of relaxation and facilitating just that meditative state. You know, if you find yourself in surroundings that help you uh, ease the mind and just slow down your breathing and help you arrive to that calm state, then I think this is what Natasha wanted to deliver here. Now, people felt it, you know, if you were gonna talk about like all the way cool and all the way warm, you got lots of cool green olives going on here. And then all of a sudden you got like the reds and the bronzes. So I can understand how it could be tricky to navigate 
Although I would say you don't necessarily have to hop from zeal to serene. Sense, I can't read zeal to sense. You don't have to combine those two shades. You can just stick to this color story here. And then another day you'll venture over here. And if you wanted to experiment with combining the shades, both the cool and the warm, you could. It was an interesting concept. I like it. I like the fact that you have all types of shades in here. Definitely expanded more so, as we had said before, all neutral palette with that pop of blue. At least Natasha dedicated two rows to the blue story, not being all blue, but more of, again, the olive, the mint green, uh, more of like a midnight blue and the teals found here like in flow and mantra and then if you move over you have the red and the peach balance having that very warm terracotta tone to it almost straight out of bronze palette I should say mindful is the cream to powder as well as calm we have two cream to powders in here mindful is like the deeper warm brown doesn't have a whole lot of depth because again, the cream to powders, they apply lighter on the skin than how they appear in pan. Is Mantra, excuse me, Mantra is also a cream to powder. So nice that we have this shade as a cream to powder. Could be a little easier to apply on the lid unless it was a little easier to apply on the lid than if it was a, a traditional creamy matte. All that to say, Zendo is an interesting concept. One of the more interesting ones found in her midi palettes. Would I consider this to be a new, no, I wouldn't consider this to be a neutral palette. It definitely sits between Circo Loco and Biba for me. You love the tones in a Biba, but you're like, I need to shake it up sometimes. You're like, Circo Loco is a little too much. The Zendo, I feel, sits between those two palettes. I would also say, you know, maybe it sits between bronze and Circo Loco, or it's a mixture of bronze and the gold palette, right? If, like for instance, you love the teals, like you love Python and Aurora and Lime Chrome, in the gold palette, but you weren't crazy about the cool mustard browns. Although you don't have lime chrome in here, I know that's a fire shade. You have more of the metallics. Although Yama, Yama is a duochrome found in Zendo. It has like a, a duochrome flippity flip. It's not the same though, is not the same as lime chrome. Lime Chrome has more shine. It's a different duochrome altogether, but it's there, it's there. You, But as I said before, if you love the bronze palette, you've been eyeing it, you're like, I don't want bronze all the time. Although these shades are not like the bronze palette, they can give you a bronze feel. For instance, Sense, it's such a beautiful pinky bronze shade. And when you pair it with Balance, I think you can have like that bronze moment. You can add more heat to it by introducing vigor and relief. Relief is a lot more peachier in tone here. So you can have more of like a peachy brown moment. If you wanted to add more spice, you could blend in vigor. But if you go to the other side, you got your teals and your greens. So I would say this is like the happy medium palette. Again, Zendo being about balance, Zen, finding that compromise, that middle ground. So if you were eyeing this palette and in the hopes of it delivering those negotiations, those color negotiations, then it could be it for you. And we have arrived after nearly two hours of yapping. We have what dropped in August of 2021. Retro for me, did it drop in August? My goodness. Everything's a blur at this point. The mini retro dropped in March of 2020. Okay, that was, I think, well-received mini at the time. When we saw this palette, however, the original mini retro had that muted green, very vintage in feel. And then we saw all burgundies, wines, mauves, cool roses. This for me right here is kind of how I feel about Lila. 
where Leela dedicated itself to the purple color story but presenting different hues of purple. This for me is like how, how broad can we expand the burgundy story? And burgundy is just one of those shades that I cannot get enough. I love the tone, just the richness of it. But much like how I feel about Metropolis, aligning with that inspiration again post-industrial age new york art deco great gatsby era this although natasha didn't pinpoint a a time in history yes retro to her might be retro different to someone else i just saw edgar Allan poe victorian era like you know dead rose that very just solemn dark romance feel and when i was using this palette and i saw the looks when i was taking photos i was like oh this is my vampire palette i align with those vibes completely and the reason why this just made itself a fast favorite because First of all, I love the size. I love that it's in the midi. The colors, the formula, I think consisted all the way through. You actually have five cream to powders. Retro has the most cream to powders found in this size palette. The metallics in here. Well, another thing, okay, hold on. We got three repeats, three coming from Lila, hey, hey. Helio, Nude Mauve, and where is it and amara these three already exist in lila so you saw with lila that was more in like the the cooler part of the color spectrum and now we have burgundies we have just this beautiful taupe oh part although it's taupe it has just like a hint of like an aubergine in there. I think it is so unique. When you place this all over your lid and through the crease, it is perfect. You could also introduce the glitzier shades, well, appropriately named glitz, and psychedelic. These are here to serve more as like your sparklers, right? So if you wanted a little more shine, you can definitely apply those on the lid or on the inner corner. But then you have the more rosy tones here, the more mauvey tones. Well, you have mauves here too. Again, I just think it's so intelligent, this palette, the colors that are included in here, the vast array of formulas, creamy matte, cream to powder, metallic. I don't know if these are dub chroma crystals, but more of like those topper dazzler shades for Natasha Denona to have in this palette. One of her best, most definitely. One of my most favorite midi palettes. Definitely more than love. As much as I love bronze, more than bronze for me, more than Zendo, retro is definitely one of my most favorites with Lila, with bronze, and Metropolis. I love Biba too. I love Biba too. The looks from Biba are extraordinary. But when I get into the retro palette and I create these burgundy mauve rose brown hued eye looks, top shelf. And in terms of if this is for you, mm, again, color specific. If you love mauves, burgundies, maroons, I mean, there's no question retro will be the perfect matchup for you. I would say, however, if you wanted to venture out of the neutral side of things, if you have Glam and Biba, and you still love those shades, you adore the looks you create, but you want a little more, you're looking for a little something. I think retro is a great way to go because you could technically still remain in the neutral realm of things, but now you're in the burgundy neutral realm. I think it's a great twist to looks that you've been creating that heavily rely on browns and bronzes and, and tans and creams and beiges and all those types of shades to now kind of just move over to the other part of the spectrum, still have those colors, but introduced in this way, I think is a great change for you. So that is it, we have completed the ultimate Natasha Denona guide, the 15 pan palette edition with the 28 pan palettes. 
in the tan pan palette. <laughs> maybe I'll do a five pan one. I don't have the cranberry one or, or maybe I do and I just can't find it. All that to say, I hope this video helped. If you have not purchased a Natasha Denona palette, if you're deciding which one to get, maybe you have a lot of them and you just needed to be reintroduced to the inspiration, to the information of all these palettes. Then again, I hope this proved helpful to you fam. I will see you down in the comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial, Natasha Denona video, or monthly faves. Take care, and I will see you again soon.